What the Falcons do? Rise up. Welcome to Rise Up Reactions, the show where we talk all things Falcons, NFL, Georgia sports, and in general the sports news of the day. I'm your host, Dr. Lee Denning, lifelong sports fan, medical doctor, and uh, today I'm coming back to you to talk about the Week 18, the final regular season week matchups for the NFL. We have 16 games going. Before I get started, the most recent news on DeMar Hamlin uh, is that he is awake. I don't know if he's been extubated yet. Um, typically, from a medical standpoint, you will try to do what's called uh, weaning sedation when somebody's intubated, not breathing on their own, to make sure they are able to secure their own airway before you take a, a, patent, a patent airway that you already have established for them and remove it. It sounds really, really good that he is uh, able to you know, somewhat communicate with family. I heard a report he's writing. I've heard a report that he's grabbing hands, that he's able to look at family and show good brainwave activity, um, whatever that means necessarily. But anyways, basically, he seems to be doing well. Uh, from this horrible, tragic event that happened to him. Um, no timeline on him getting out of the hospital, but you know, thankfully it appears that he will end up uh, coming out on the other side okay overall. He does still have a fairly long recovery ahead of him, though. And, and again, thoughts and prayers go out to him. If you want to support his um, any of his charities, I would recommend that you do that. I believe he has a toy drive that he funds in the Buffalo area, so certainly donate money to that if you're looking to do something to help uh, him out. But let's jump into this. Uh, let's jump into our 16 games this week. Uh, everything is being played on Saturday and Sunday. We have two Saturday matchups. We have the Kansas City Chiefs, 13-3, uh, at the Las Vegas Raiders. Now, Raiders eliminated from the playoffs. There's not really anything to play for, for uh, with them. And we know that Jared Stidham is going to be starting at quarterback. Kansas City, they're still playing for seeding because we do know that the NFL is not going to play the Buffalo versus Bengals game. Uh, Pat McAfee has an interesting little segment where he talks about possibilities for what they could do, including adding an eighth team uh, this year only to both sides to try and make it so that nobody gets a home field, or not just a home field match, but nobody gets a bye week because the Bills did have the tiebreaker over the Kansas City Chiefs, and we don't know what would have happened in that Bengals versus um, uh, that Bengals versus Bills game. And the Bengals actually, depending on what happens with Kansas City this week, had they won the game, had a chance to be the number one overall seed because they would have had a tiebreaker over Kansas City as well. So again, a lot is up in the air. So Kansas City does have a lot to play for this week because of that. They're not really going to be resting starters. They're going to be playing for home field advantage. I think Kansas City is going to come out at 4:30 on Saturday and beat the pants of the Las Vegas Raiders. Raiders really playing for draft position right now. Not really a whole lot else. Um, uh, but let's just move on. We got next a Saturday night matchup. This will determine the AFC South. The Tennessee Titans at the 8-8 eight eight Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, Jaguars... I have said since earlier in the year, they were playing good football early. They lost a couple of very close games, and I think Jacksonville should be the outright winner of the AFC South at this point, but they didn't get it done early in the season. They have gotten it done late, and they've looked really good doing it. Tennessee is going to be rolling with Josh Dobbs. I don't think he's going to be enough to get you there. I think you're going to see a very similar game to how they played the Cowboys last week, which was pretty bad. And Jacksonville is going to be a semi-dangerous team getting to host a playoff game when they win this one to, uh, in Duval. So, yeah, give me the Jacksonville Jaguars. Then we go to... The first of the Sunday matchups. I will be at this game. Let's go. Tampa Bay at my Atlanta Falcons. Desmond Ritter getting his first win last week, showing that he is a competent quarterback. Yes, he had a touchdown taken off the board by ref ball. But again, he has not made a whole lot of mistakes so far. Um, the turnovers that have happened while he's been under center have been because of fumbles, particularly with Drake London. He has got to work on controlling the ball. Uh, but Tampa Bay, they don't have a whole lot to play for. They're 8-8. Eight and eight. There's not a whole lot that they're, that they're playing for. They're not playing for seeding at this point. Uh, they can't really do any worse in the draft, no matter what at this point. You know, I think uh, whatever it is, 17 may be the lowest that they could absolutely be. Uh, and they can't be higher than fourth, and they can't be lower than fourth in playoff seeding. So we're not sure if Blaine Gabbert is going to take the field. We're not sure if Kyle Trask is going to take the field. We're not sure if we're going to see Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, all their weapons. We may see a little bit. They've talked about, about starting their starters, but at the same time, it's hard to imagine that their starters 
to play an entire four quarters of football uh, where you have a chance of getting injured going into a playoff run. So I do think Tom Brady probably takes the first snap. That wouldn't surprise me if they're a little petty. And just so that Tom Brady doesn't have a chance of losing to the Falcons in his career, give Blaine Gabbert or Kyle Trask the start and then put uh, Brady in after that initial maybe handoff to Leonard Burnett. Again, petty, but it's a robbery game, so you expect petty. But I am picking the Falcons because we will be going hard. The worst we can really do in the draft is 10th, and you still get decent talent at 10th. The best we could do in the draft if we lose this game is potentially 6th. And then depending on what happens the rest of the league, we may end up anywhere between that 6th to 10th spot. But let me go and say I want the Falcons to win. I want to beat Tom Brady one time in his career from the Falcons. Let's go Dirty Birds. Then we move on to a win and end situation for the New England Patriots going to the Buffalo Bills. Now, Buffalo, obviously, they are going to be playing like men on fire. There's been some distractions this week but with DeMar Hamlin. Uh, but they are going to, I really feel like they are going to unite in that locker room. New England Patriots have a decent defense, but they don't have much of an offense. The Bills have been playing lights out football overall. We didn't get to see what they could do against a quality opponent with the Bengals last week. Again, due to extenuating circumstances. Uh, New England Patriots, I do not think, end up making the playoffs. I think they lose this game, and I think that some of the other situations uh, end up going against them. And I, I particularly think that Miami possibly can get in, even with Teddy Bridgewater at quarterback. Though Tua is probably not coming back the rest of the season. Third concussion in a single year. If you're in high school, you're not playing football for an entire year. In the pros, I they're getting paid a lot of money. I don't know what their their protocol is on that one, but again, give me the Buffalo Bills over New England Patriots. Then we go to the Minnesota Vikings at the Chicago Bears. Minnesota cannot be the number one seed no matter what. They're just playing potentially for a little bit of seeding on their side, but more or less they're locked into either the the three or the, the two or the three seed no matter what. Probably locked into the three seed. Uh, playing the Chicago Bears. Chicago definitely playing for draft position here. I don't look for them to play a ton of starters. Uh, I think Minnesota wins this one pretty easily. Then. We'll go to the Baltimore Ravens at the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, the 10-6 and six Ravens at the 11-4 and four Bengals. Uh, obviously, we would have loved to have seen this game play out last week, but it's just hard to say what would have actually ended up happening with the Bills and the Bengals. I think the Bengals are a better football team regardless of Mars back, not back. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens, even though they've had some wins, they lost a bad one last week, and they're just not looking like a good football team right now. They started strong last year, too, and then finished poorly. They're kind of following that same record right now. Started strong, ending poorly. Give me the Bengals here. I think they're a better football team, a more complete football team altogether. Uh, then we go to the Houston Texans at the Indianapolis Colts. Houston not quite locked into the number one seed. They had to lose this game. Uh, in order to obtain for sure the number one seed. Uh, if Chicago wins, though, it's, or sorry, if Chicago loses and the Houston wins, Chicago gets the one seed, they get the two seed. Hard to say what would happen. I think Chicago would probably trade out of that to a team like the Indianapolis Colts, who they are playing. And the Indianapolis Colts then would try to take a quarterback, which they desperately need to be competitive in the future in a division that's certainly winnable if you have a little bit better play at the at the quarterback position. But Bengals, uh, not Bengals, sorry, Colts, they're down a lot of starters. They haven't looked good all year. Houston has looked like a better team up until last week where they got absolutely blown out by the Jaguars because it's in Indianapolis. I will go with the Indianapolis Colts. I don't really have a good reason otherwise. Then we move on to the New York Jets and the Miami Dolphins. I've already said that I think the Miami Dolphins are a better overall football team. It would not surprise me if the Jets won this game uh, and went to be you know 8-9 and nine this year, but I think the Dolphins will win, and with the New England Patriots losing, I believe, I don't know exactly, but I believe that is the situation that gets them into the seventh seed for the playoffs. Now, a lot could change if an eighth seed gets added for any reason. I have no idea what would happen there. But right now, I think Miami wins, and then they are also into the playoffs with a New England loss. Then we go to the Carolina Panthers at the New Orleans Saints, a completely meaningless game. Carolina had a chance to make it an interesting NFC South race last week. They didn't do it. They're going to New Orleans. New Orleans, 7-9, and nine, not a whole lot to play for other than draft position. 
Honestly, I think the I think Carolina is going to come out and win this one. I think they're going to go to the New Orleans Saints, and I think they're going to win this one. I just don't think New Orleans is all that good right now. I think they're fairly dejected on the year. They won last week, but because the Carolina Panthers lost, there's no intrigue as to who can make it from the NFC South. I'm just going to go with the Carolina Panthers because I like chaos. And then we move on to the Cleveland Browns at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Ah. Oh. God, if you had asked me four or five weeks ago if I thought the Pittsburgh Steelers had any shot in hell of having a winning record, no. Never, ever thought that was possible. But here we are. Mike Tomlin has a chance to keep that record intact of never having a losing season, and it's against the hapless Cleveland Browns. It's at Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh defense is certainly better than Cleveland's offense. Uh, The Pittsburgh offense, I think, is on par with the quality of, of uh, Cleveland defense. So with that in mind, I do think the better team is Pittsburgh, and I think they end up winning. Uh, Deshaun Watson did show a little bit of life towards the end of that last game, or their last game, and started to come alive a little bit. But I think you're going to see the Deshaun Watson return to form more next year uh, after he has a full off season under his belt. Not that I'm cheering for that, but again, I think he'll be a better player next year in terms of purely football. Uh, acumen. Uh, And then same thing with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Kenny Pickett's starting to come alive a little bit. They're winning close games and they're ugly games, but defense is keeping them alive and they're finding ways to win. So give me the Pittsburgh Steelers. If the Steelers win and Miami loses and New England loses, oddly enough, Pittsburgh is in the playoffs. So that's a crazy situation to me. But anyways, that's the end of the 1 o'clock games. Uh, Just so I can kind of rush through this here, we've got the Chargers at the Broncos to start our 4 o'clock games. Chargers 10 and 6 locked into a playoff berth. The Broncos don't have a whole lot to play for. They are playing to screw the Seattle Seahawks out of a top draft position. So I think that Denver is going to play really hard in this game. I think Los Angeles may ultimately end up benching some of their starters at one point some point in the game, though it is certainly a divisional game. With that said, uh, the Denver Broncos are down a head coach. Russell Wilson doesn't look that great. Uh, they did play really well against the Chiefs, and they played them competitive twice now, but that's the only game that seems like they're playing fairly consistent and competitive. I do think the Chargers are going to win this game. Then we go to the New York Giants at the Philadelphia Eagles. I don't know if we know for sure if Jalen Hurts is back yet, but the Giants, they play, have, they've made a miraculous comeback. I didn't think they would end up winning this many games to, to lock in a playoff spot. They are locked in as the sixth seed pretty much no matter what uh, for the playoffs for the NFC. And I honestly think that they will lose to the Philadelphia Eagles, though. Eagles have not played particularly great under Gardner Minshew, but it's been a little bit more on their defense than it has on their offense. They've had some mistakes that they just shouldn't have had throughout the whole time. Um, I'm going to go with the Philadelphia Eagles locking in the number one seed. They have had three opportunities to do that. Fourth time's a charm. Here we go. Philadelphia Eagles lock in the number one overall seed for the NFC and take home field advantage. Though there is still some intrigue, and that's why there's another 4 o'clock game later on that we're going to talk about. Then we have the Arizona Cardinals at the San Francisco 49ers. Cardinals couldn't beat a bad Atlanta team. Atlanta almost didn't beat a bad Cardinals team. San Francisco is a solid football team and has a shot at being the number one overall seed. Um, and I think the way they get it is if... I can't remember exactly. I think it's if Philly loses and if the Cowboys lose and San Francisco wins, then they get the number one seed. So they're still playing for something. They're not going to rest their starters here because they could still be the number one overall seed for the NFC and have home field advantage the entire time. It's a slim shot, if especially if the Eagles win, it's over. But you're not going to know that because these teams are all playing at the same time. Give me the San Francisco 49ers over the Arizona Cardinals. Then we go to the Los Angeles Rams at the Seattle Seahawks. Now, Seahawks are not in control of their own destiny, but they absolutely have to win this game if they have any shot of staying alive in the playoffs. The Rams, similar to the um, uh, similar to the Denver Broncos, are playing to potentially screw up the, um, the, D- the Detroit Lions draft pick because that's who owns their number one pick this year with the Stafford trade last year. So with that in mind, though, Detroit's going to need the Seattle Seahawks to lose in order to have a shot at the playoffs. And purely because I want to see Detroit in the playoffs, give me the Rams. Then we move on to the last 4 o'clock game on Sunday night. We have the Dallas Cowboys at the Washington Commies. Dallas, again, we've already talked about this numerous times. They have a lot to play for. You have all of the teams that have a chance to secure the NFC set or the NFC number one overall seed with home field advantage throughout the playoffs are playing at this 4 o'clock time. 
I think the Dallas Cowboys are going to come out. They're going to beat the Washington Commies. They've already said Washington Commies don't know what they're doing at quarterback. They should have played Taylor Heineke last week. Um, yeah, give me the Cowboys. I think it's a fairly easy pick. They're going to come out, and they're going to be firing on all cylinders. Commies are officially out uh, for the time being. Um, and, again, we don't know what's going to happen because of the Bengals and Bills game getting canceled. There's a chance of an eighth seed getting put in on both sides, but I still am not sure if the Washington Commies have a shot at that no matter what. Finally, Detroit Lions at Green Bay Packers. Sunday night football, possibly to determine the seventh seed for the NFC. Now, this game matters no matter what happens in the Seattle game. This one matters. If Seattle loses, the winner of this game is in the playoffs. If Seattle wins, Green Bay controls their own destiny, but Detroit, Detroit's knocked out automatically, but Detroit can screw over the Green Bay Packers and keep them out of the playoffs, keep Aaron Rodgers out of the playoffs. Now, Green Bay has looked really good the last few weeks. They have come in and been on a winning streak. They have finally put it all together and been a team that I think a lot of us thought would be present for most of the season. Detroit Lions, they are the Cinderella story of the year. Coming back from a one and I think they were one in seven, one in six at one point in time, and finding a way to claw back to eight and eight with a shot at the playoffs. Again, I think the Detroit Lions, I want to see them in the playoffs. Give me the Detroit Lions. And that will do it for week 18, guys. We're done with picking the regular season so far. My record at this point in time is 159, 94, 2, and a no contest. So, not a bad season overall, 97th percentile on ESPN's picks. Let me know how you guys are doing down below. I've really enjoyed this. I'm going to continue it for the playoffs, but obviously those will be shorter videos. Thank you guys so much for supporting me throughout this first season of picking games. Um, I really appreciate it. I've appreciated the support. I've gotten up to about 59 subscribers at this point, which, again, small potatoes for big-time YouTubers, but means a lot to me. It means that people are enjoying my content and subscribing, and I really appreciate that. Thanks for watching, guys, and as always, rise up.